Hey everyone, this is Dave. Welcome back to another Literalist reaction video. With me as always is my buddy and musical mentor, Master John Doe. Hey John. Hey Dave, how you doing, bud? Good. It's uh, always good to be back with more music. I have been introduced to a lot of interesting things so far, uh, good and bad, but you told me uh, what we're about to do is different than what we've done so far, so go on. Well, I've told you many times over the years, too many to count, uh, that, that music, good music ended in 1979. I'm going <laughs> to, that is a thing you said. That is, yeah, you've definitely said that. And that's an exaggeration. It, it really didn't end until 89, but I'm going to, I'm going to go for a little bit further. We're going to go to 1994. The song is called Spoon Man. The band is. Sound... The band is what? You, you glitched out. Soundgarden. Uh, honestly, we should almost do that again. Cause literally it went, the band is. <laughs> Let it roll, Dave. It's Let... part of technology. Let <laughs> it right. roll. All right, here we go. Uh, Spoon Man. Ooh, all right. We, we got to so so far I I think I have heard this song in passing. I don't I certainly did not know that the lyrics were spoon man. Um that <laughs> that part is definitely new. Um it it's just like it sounds semi familiar. Um but I certainly have never listened to the lyrics 100%. I like this uh, I want to say this is a the grunge style is that is that about right? Yeah, it's, it's in the grunge. I think it falls under grunge category. Sure. I, I really enjoy the like driving guitar line and driving bass line. Like it, it really punches the song up a giant notch. Um, so musically, it's a lot of fun to listen to. You feel the energy like of the entire music. It makes you want to move. It makes you feel uh, interested in the song. Lyrically, I cannot tell you what it's about so far. Um, what I you know I think that when I heard Spoon Man and here's a cut here, dear uh, viewers is for very few of you what I'm about to say. Uh, Spoon Man uh, or Spoonhead is a pejorative term used against the Cardassians in Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, and that was immediately what popped <laughs> into my head. <laughs> I and had no I, idea you're going that direction. <laughs> with nope. That. <laughs> like I said, that's for the three of you get that reference. 
Um, and I did, I, I think it sort of waylaid my brain for a short bit and I, I couldn't get off of that. <laughs> I, you know, when you first said for the Kardashians, I thought you meant the ones on TV no, that have reality shows. No, the Kardashians. But then I realized when you said the Star Trek, uh, oh, oh, he's talking DS9. Okay. All right. I now I know you. I don't know. They may be similar. Um, they're the villains. Uh, they're not very attractive. Um, they Blue blood. Uh, pr- pretty uh, much <laughs> everything that happens is fake. <laughs> it, they might That's be the it. same john it might be the same show i think they are i think they are they just transmorphed yeah but yeah and i don't know anything about the lyrics of this song myself except that it's called spoon man and my assumption was that that involved heroin because they heat okay. the drug up in the spoon and they pull up the needle i don't know that for sure i still don't know and i've read the lyrics right along with you and it's the first time i've seen the lyrics well that makes the most sense that was my second guess was a drug reference and yeah, especially but the other because... the other part my, all my friends are indians they're all brown and red no that makes a lot of sense because minority communities are much greater more hit by uh drug use and then on top of that it reduces them to skeletons they can play yeah. the music on their bones like drug use was my uh outside of him writing a song about deep space nine uh alien races before the show aired was my number one thought (laughs) number two was this is about minority drug use there you go (laughs) all right let's go we'll see we'll see we're right That was, uh, yeah, I, I mean, definitely a lot of those lyrics hearken to drug use. That's that's what I'm going to uh, end with there is for sure drug use. Um, and, right. and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we've basically had two slightly depressing songs in a row uh, <laughs> where we went back Hold to Hold on back. a minute. I would, I would beg to differ in that that song sounded rather happy about the drug use. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I go happy about it, but I mean, definitely, you know, a lot of the lyrics harken back to how sad it is that underprivileged communities absolutely are, are more affected by higher rates of drug use. And, you know, it's it's obviously comes from the the feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, powerlessness. And so you reach an end point when you feel you can do nothing else and you take back what control you can by getting high. Um, and it's not a, a good choice, but it is a choice. And to a point I don't, I'm certainly not in a position to judge someone else for making a choice that I can't begin to understand. So I, I think it is in a, amazing that so much of music talks about issues that is very hard to just stand at a podium and discuss. Yeah. And I, I think I respect that a lot. I think music and comedians are the two outlets that have the most freedom to just say things that make you sit back and go, huh. 
and and really interact with in an in a less confrontational way than a lot of other mediums in where you're just pounded with it directly in the face. Yeah, yeah. Music music drives things into people that may, they may not react to immediately, but it's in them. Mm -hmm. So it has effect on them. So it's good stuff. I chose the song because it's in my playlist and I didn't know what it said and I wanted to hear your <laughs> literalist view. Yeah. But yeah. uh but secondly, um, it's not a four-four time signature. It's a change-up time signature all the way throughout it. So even though it's a it's a grunge song, it wasn't a straightforward, you know, from the beginning to the end, keeping with the same signature. Uh, it had movements. It had changes. It had slow, you know, slow. It was just musically. I think it's a great song. And Chris Cornell is an amazing singer. Well, and then on top of that, I loved that once again, um, even though it was much more modern, I say much more modern, John, this is like 25 years ago, um, yeah. much more modern, it still gave the the music itself, the musicians time to breathe. We had a long solo section there in the center. Um, yeah. So it still wasn't the modern pop that is just like, boom, boom, here we go, catchy chorus, move on. Um, right. You know, we still had amazing, talented musicians uh, bringing to the forefront their their craft and their skills. So, yeah, that was fun. Uh, I I don't know if I'd listen to it a ton. <laughs> Once again, the lyrics are going to bog you down every time. Man, Dave. Every time, man. It's a it's a brain problem. <laughs> it's a me brain problem. Um, and yeah. it bothers me. And there's nothing I can do about it. So, well, you've been putting off that lobotomy for a long time. I think it's time. I think it's it time. might be time. I spick my brain. <laughs> Folks, if you have another direction we should go in the world of grunge, uh, please leave it in the comments. Like the video. We'd appreciate that. And uh, and Dave will keep wearing that hat. Did I wear this hat before? I don't know. I live oh. on the road, man. I own very little. <laughs>